Good morning friends. So welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about another endocrine disorder which is diabetes mellitus. So poodles, miniature schnauzer, men pen, terriers and beagles these are some of the most commonly predisposed breed for such condition. So diabetes mellitus is an uh, metabolic disorder. So there are basically two different types of diabetes on the basis of insulin dependency so number one that is the type 1 disorder which is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. In this type beta cells of the pancreas is compromised. Either it is damaged or it is uh, not producing enough insulin. So basically there is lack of insulin production or insufficient insulin production which will lead to insulin deficiency and ultimately insulin uh, deficiency or insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. So this is one of the most common type of diabetes and uh, the most common etiologies responsible for this disorder are pancreatitis, immune destruction, immune mediated destruction like in cats we can call it as amyloidosis and uh, some of the breeds like Kishons where there is genetically there is low number of beta cells of pancreas. Okay, so either this sort of inflammation of pancreas can damage the beta cells of pancreas or immune mediated destruction like in uh, cats it is amyloidosis and in uh, sometimes there is a lack of beta cell uh, in the pancreas. So in this type ketoacidosis is the most common. Uh, basically this type of uh, disorder is prone for ketoacidosis. Alright, so because of this abnormal uh, carbohydrate uh, metabolism, there will be protein and lipid metabolism as well, which is again abnormal. So the other type is type 2, that is non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. In this uh, type, there will be peripheral resistance to insulin. Okay, it means the production of insulin is optimal. But somehow the receptors are not responding to the insulin or there is no uh, response for the insulin. Either it is resistance or it is antagonism. So we will discuss. So this is more common in cats. This type is more common in cats. So the etiology is uh, common for this type is the down regulation of insulin receptor. It means the insulin is optimum but receptors are not receiving or it is not responding to the insulin right the second type is insulin receptor antagonism now this is the most important thing that we need to know right so the number one is elevated growth hormone elevated growth hormone like acromegaly in cats where you will be able to see enlarged head paws and abdomen so in such condition also there will be insulin resistance development in the system okay the second type is elevated progesterone it uh, is common in intact female dogs either in diastress or in pregnancy so in such condition also there will be type 2 kind of diabetes mellitus where there will be antagonism of insulin receptor the third type is elevated cortisol see excess cortisol be it hyperadrenocorticism or iatrogenic adrenocorticism, it also leads to insulin receptor antagonism. Okay, so receptors become so uh, resistant to the insulin present in the system. The fourth and the important part is obesity. So in obese uh, dogs or cats, there will be down regulation of insulin or the resistance of res resistance of the receptors. Okay, so these are the two basic types of diabetes mellitus. One is type 1, the another one is type 2. So what it is all about, you need to know. So one is insulin dependent, other one is non-insulin dependent. The one is beta cells of pancreas is damaged or compromised. There will be lack of insulin production. The second one is the insulin is optimum but there will be peripheral resistance to insulin. The first one is most common, the second one is less common but it is more common in cats. The first one there will be immune mediated or inflammatory destruction of beta cells. The second one there will be insulin receptor resistance or antagonism. 
मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ एलिवेटेड ग्रोथ हॉर्मोन और प्रोजेस्टेड हॉर्न और एक्सेस कॉर्टिकोस्टीरोड और ओबेसिटी राइट सो दीज आर दी टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डायबिटिस मेलेटिक्स नाउ वी विल डिस्कस मोर अबाउट दी क्लिनिकल साइंस ओके सो वॉट आर दी मोस्ट कॉमन क्लिनिकल साइंस ऑफ डायबिटिस मेलेटिस वन इज पॉली यूरिया पॉलीडिप्सिया देन अगैन पॉलीफेजिया एंड वेट लॉस सो वील मोर डिस्कस इन डिटेल अबाउट दी रीजन्स बिहाइंड सच साइंस द फर्स्ट इज पॉली यूरिया एंड पॉलीडिप्सिया वाई देयर इज पॉली यूरिया एंड पॉलीडिप्सिया बिकॉज इट इज ऑस्मोटिक डायरेस इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ ऑस्मोटिक डायरेस वी ऑल नो दैट एलिवेटेड ब्लड ब्लड ग्लूकोज लेवल इट विल स्पिल आउट इन द यूरिन एंड कॉज इन ऑस्मोटिक डायरेस ओके सो This is the most common reason. The second part is polyphagia and weight loss. Why, even though the dog is eating more, still he is not putting on the weight. So these two signs, that is polyphagia and weight loss. Why such condition is there in diabetes? It's because of the decreased intracellular glucose level. So without insulin, blood glucose levels are high, but the glucose can't get into the cells. as a result the animal must metabolize protein and fat reserve okay and it ultimately stimulate hypothalamic feeding and hunger center consequently the animal has a large appetite still it in a, is in a state of negative nitrogen balance leading to weight loss so this is the whole reason behind uh, such sign polyuria polydipsia because of osmotic diuresis polyphagia and weight loss because of whole of this mechanism so these two are the uh, reasons the second uh, common clinical sign is urinary tract infection basically in diabetic cats or dogs there will be high chance of urinary tract infection because of the high glucose so high glucose level in the urine and hyperglycemia related immunodeficiency there will be secondary flare ups in fact infection or in uh, this bacterial uh, flourishment all of such reasons behind the urinary tract infection uh, the third is cataract cataract is more common in dogs okay so why diabetic cataract is there we need to know the whole pathway for <laughs> this thing sorry why this cataract is developing in diabetic uh, dogs basically what happened there is a sorbitol pathway what happened the glucose uh, diffuses into the lens where it is converted by aldose reductase to sorbitol okay which is then metabolized to fructose since neither sorbitol nor fructose can diffuse out of the lens the osmotic pressure within the lens increases and drawing more and more water into the lens leading to disorder of the lens fibers so 30% of the dog have reduced vision on the presentation and 80% have significant cataract right so this is the reason and the whole pathway leading to cataract and the other uh, point you should know while preparing for navle is plantigrade stance in cats okay so this is also one of the most common signs in cat uh suffering from diabetes mellitus so there may be one question or one sign and you have to uh make your differentials so this way you need to know all the typical signs of diabetes mellitus the other clinical signs or the picture clinical picture is hemogram so in hemogram you can see it may be usually normal but sometimes because of dehydration you can see high elevated pcv and the stress leucogram okay so uh, if by any chance if there is any concurrent infection or pancreatitis inside the system then you may expect neutrophilic leukocytosis also okay so these are the common clinical signs related to diabetes mellitus next we'll discuss about biochemistry so what happens in biochemistry what you can expect the biochemical picture the one is hyperglycemia so hyperglycemia can be as high as 275 mg per ml the normal range is 80 to 120 mg okay elevated alt alp is also because of the secondary hepatic lipidosis 
okay so elevated cholesterol also because we already informed we already discussed because of lack of insulin lack of intracellular glucose there will be abnormal protein and lipid metabolism and because of these two abnormal metabolism there will be elevated cholesterol alt alb like that high lipase also due to concurrent pancreatitis or reduced gfr glomerular filtration rate okay so in urine analysis if you will examine the urine sample you may expect glucosuria if there is glucosuria then only we can say it's a truly diabetic dog or cat specific gravity may be mostly more than 1.015 and if it is a concurrent uti infection then there will be bacterial presence also proteinuria will be there ketonuria will be there in case of ketoacidotic cats or dogs okay so these are the common clinical signs and the blood picture now we need to know how we need to diagnose this condition basically it's very simple uh, there will be persistent fasting hyperglycemia but in cats the the stress induced hyperglycemia is also very common so you need to uh, check the urine glucose also whether there is glucose urea and uh, for like it's a rule of thumb basically if there is hyperglycemia plus glucose urea then only you will expect truly diabetes mellitus okay so uh, there is another very important point that i want to discuss how you need to differentiate between stress induced uh, hyperglycemia or diabetic hyperglycemia okay so there is a one test that we need to perform that is serum fructosamine what is serum fructosamine fructosamine is a glycosylated albumin basically it is elevated if it is elevated then only we'll be able to say that it's a true uh, diabetes mellitus because it differentiates between stress and diabetic hyperglycemia okay so this this way you can uh, diagnose diabetes mellitus and this is the common test this is also one of the most important question to know uh, how you need to differentiate between stress related and diabetic hyperglycemia okay so now the treatment what are the treatment options and how would we need to uh, proceed further for the treatment so goal is to control the signs associated with hyperglycemia and glucose urea while avoiding insulin induced hypoglycemia so we should be aware that during the initial uh, treatment process we need the our main focus is to monitor for any signs of hypoglycemia because eventually the treatment will work but there shouldn't be any uh, case of hypoglycemia there shouldn't be any low blood glucose level if there is any then we need to adjust our dose of insulin okay why uh, that we'll discuss another thing is if there will be elevated uh, glucose level in the system for a prolonged time then it will be toxic for the beta cells of pancreas so that is the reason why we need to avoid this hyperglycemia we need to maintain normal glucose level in the system what's our target basically if it is a dog without cataract we need to maintain our main goal of the therapy is to maintain the glucose level from 120 to 180 if it is with cataract then we it may extend up to 250 which is okay which is normal okay so in cats are the uh, our reach our goal is to maintain at 120 to 300 mg per deciliter so let's discuss about the type of insulins there are basically three four different types of insulin depending upon the duration of action and the use and the concentration so the number one is the regular insulin regular insulin is a short duration short acting insulin we normally use it in a diabetic ketoacidosis or any emergency condition so the concentration is this 100 units you can definitely make a note of it of the different types of insulin based on the duration of action so regular insulin is the short duration short acting nph and lente these are the intermediate acting insulin mostly we use it in dogs 
PZI is the long acting insulin and glargin is also long acting insulin. So this one is the insulin of choice for cats for treating the diabetes mellitus. So you please make a note of these different types of insulin based on the duration of action. Okay. So now uh, the, let's discuss in detail about the treatment in cats for this diabetes. Okay, so cats, any stress like illness or any new cat in the house, in the territory, cats are very sensitive. So they may develop hyperglycemia that is stress related or stress induced hyperglycemia. But the problem here is if there will be prolonged hyperglycemia, like I said, it may be toxic for beta cells of pancreas and again, it there will be the chance of diabetes in long run. Okay, so uh, two days of hyperglycemia can cause glucose toxicity and further suppression of insulin. So this is the reason why we need to uh, we need to focus on the management and the lifestyle also other than the treatment and the diet. So let's discuss about the insulin treatment, insulin therapy for a diabetic cat. So glargin, as we said, it's the insulin of choice uh, for cats, treatment for cats. So it's a long acting insulin. The starting dose for a cat suffering from diabetes where the blood glucose level is more than 360, we should start it as a dose rate of as a dose rate of 0.5 units per kg BID. And if it is less than 360, then 0.25 unit per kg BID. So initial few days of the therapy, we advise to keep the cat in, in the hospital under monitoring, under observation, to just check that there shouldn't be any hypoglycemia. So basically we need to monitor the glucose curve and we should check for any signs of hypoglycemia or low blood glucose level in the blood system. So if there is any glucose hypoglycemia incident, you need to decrease the dose of uh, insulin by 25%. Okay, and uh, if there is no hypoglycemia and cat is doing absolutely fine for initial few days, then we can discharge the cat and we can ask them to uh, for uh, revisit and follow up and to check the blood glucose level at a regular time interval of one week, two week, three week, four week after discharge. Okay, so other than insulin and hospitalization, there should be proper food. Proper food for diabetes as in there should be uh, low carbohydrate and high protein inside the diet regime of cat. Okay, so there should be proper food, there should be proper insulin therapy and there are some uh, other oral hypoglycemic drugs as well uh, but we should be very cautious we should be very careful while giving such drugs but for navle point of view you should know the most common oral hypoglycemic medication drug that we generally prescribe cats is glipizide but we should avoid prescribing this drug in thin and ketonuric cats okay so, but the main uh, main uh, this thing how this drug work or act it actually stimulate the release of insulin from functional beta cells of pancreas okay so this is also one of the option treatment option we can uh, consider while treating the diabetic cat okay so you should know about this drug as well what about the treatment in dogs so it's pretty much the same but yes insulin therapy we need to uh, change our insulin uh, most commonly we use nph or lente that is the intermediate acting uh, insulin so we use it uh, in the treatment in dogs and we start it at a dose rate of 0.5 unit per kg every 24 hours initially with the dietary therapy so again here also we need to hospitalize the dog or we need to monitor for 24 hours to watch out for any signs of hypoglycemia. If there is any hypoglycemia we need to adjust the dose. If there is no hypoglycemia we just need to carry on and we can discharge after 24 hours and re-evaluate once a week. Okay so this is how we need to start the therapy of a diabetes mellitus dog. And what about diet? Diet in dog we need to focus more on fiber and we need to reduce the carbs. So low carb is the uh, thumb rule for any diabetic patient but we need to adjust the uh, food gradually. 
we should when, whenever we are changing the diet we are, we are doing some dietary trial we need to do it very gradually so for a treatment in dog diabetic dog we need to uh, give the provide the diet low on carbs and high fiber diet exercise is a must so what happens whenever we give proper exercise proper and regular exercise there will be weight loss and it may reduce insulin resistance also because of obesity okay that we discussed about the insulin resistance development because of elevated growth hormone cortisol progesterone and obesity so this is one of the reason why we need to focus more on exercise okay so this is almost all about uh, diabetes mellitus but in our next video we will discuss the most other most important aspects like whenever there is difficulty in regulating blood glucose level or diabetic ketoacidosis treatment and semigal effect so this is very important for a navle point of view so in our next video we will be discussing more on these three aspects of the diabetes mellitus hope it is uh, helpful for you and you may learn some more other points as well but please focus on these points that we discussed today thank you